Hello everyone. Welcome to this lecture on Introduction to Computational Fluid Dynamics. This is first of the lectures in the series of online lectures being offered by CCTech, short form for Center for Computational Technologies. Well, first of all, let's start with the fundamental, which is the fluid flow phenomena. So fluid dynamics actually is a fluid under motion and it is governed by a certain set of conservation equations because we are dealing with classical mechanics here. We are not dealing with the quantum mechanics or particle physics. We are dealing more at the level of classical mechanics where things are conserved. There is no conversion of energy into mass and the other way around. But we consider mass, momentum, energy to be conserved when I say momentum is conserved, it can be that let's say there's an additional force being acted upon, but that turns out to be the rate of change of momentum, which is just force. So these three quantities, mass, momentum and energy, if they can be solved entirely, we can define any fluid flow. And these conservation laws are formulated in the form of equations, which we try to actually solve and that's what simulation is all about. But leaving aside simulations, if we were able to solve it using even simple pen and paper, the aim of doing any fluid flow analysis is twofold. One of them is to find out things like what's the effect on the boundaries, what's the effect on flow boundaries, what's the effect on wall boundaries. Let's say when I say flow boundaries, that's where any fluid or any quantity that I'm trying to conserve can pass across. And when I speak about wall boundaries, um, things cannot pass across such a boundary. So for example, uh, heat can flow across a wall, but fluid cannot flow across a wall. It is interrupted in its motion. So we are interested in calculating things like torque, like force, like pressure drops across the inlet and the outlet. We are interested in finding out what's the mass flow rate for a specific pressure that I'm applying at the fluid at the inlet side. So these are the effect on the boundaries that we're interested to have an idea about. The drag on, the f on, a, on a plate or in a car or any object we are trying to analyze. So such quantitative prediction is an aim in any fluid flow analysis. And the other one, of course, we are looking for flow visualization. We are trying to find out where the flow is um, getting separated, where there is a separation bubble, where there are secondary flows getting developed. Um, because of the secondary flows, if there is any adverse effect on uh, the primary flow and if there are some recirculation zones, that's a usual candidate in a room if you are doing a heat and heat transfer and uh, ventilation studies, HVAC analysis, heat ventilation and air conditioning studies, they are very much interested to find out where there are recirculation zones. That's where the temperature is um, supposed to rise up usually and the flow is not really helping that the heat can get dissipated or I mean if it's about heating a room then it's not really being uh, the convection driven flows are not being utilized well so these are the twofold purposes of uh, fluid flow study which is to find out the effect on the boundaries which can be flow boundaries or wall boundaries and we're also interested in doing some flow visualization now we're going to look at later on the advantages that CFD offers because it's an introduction to CFD as you can see but uh, we will see that this flow visualization is a very important aspect where CFD scores over many other phenomena that we usually have. So we have had people like uh, across the centuries who have contributed to fluid mechanics. We had people like Archimedes, Newton, uh, Newton who had a great contribution in mathematics in uh, fluid mechanics. It's just in optics that he actually failed. Um, but otherwise, as far as our course is concerned, he has had a great contribution to what we are learning today. People have gone on. Archimedes, of course, I guess you know that it's before Christ that he existed and he gave in very interesting phenomena called the buoyancy effect on the basis of which you can do a lot of natural convection studies nowadays. It's a very challenging task in CFD nowadays. We had people contributing a lot for the mathematical modeling part. We have people like Leibniz, Bernoulli, Euler, Navier and Stokes. This, this name will be familiar to you and will come up very much in fluid mechanics studies. So we have uh, these guys contributing a lot to the mathematical model and actually in the last, uh, so, so to say specifically the last two centuries, the the treatment of fluid mechanics has been primarily mathematical, which has helped also a lot of mathematicians to contribute. And uh, we had people like Reynolds, who gave in the 
nice number called Reynolds number which helps us to determine whether the inertial forces will dominate the viscous forces and end up causing the flow to be turbulent. We have also Prantl who has contributed especially in the early part of the 20th century and uh, his Prantl's boundary layer theory is very helpful in uh, predicting more accurate uh, drag on airfoils. This was one of the major contributions and of course he had a great contribution in heat transfer as well and that's why we have something called the Prandtl number which is a relative measure of the velocity boundary layer and the thermal boundary layer. Taylor series expansion again another name which you would come across if you're dealing with numerical methods especially the finite difference method. So we have had people contributing in fluid mechanics and solution of fluid mechanics mathematical models and formulating the models across the centuries and we are living in a time when the software firms or software packages have exploited all this work which has been done across the centuries with the advancement of computational speeds now. So let's speak about more about fluid flow leaving aside CFD. Well fluid flows are encountered every day it can it, it doesn't have to be in our only in the daily life that we encounter it. actually if we ask ourselves anywhere in the universe can we find any process where fluid flow and heat transfer is not involved I think we'll be struggling for an answer I guess you got it right yes it's really it's everywhere it's everywhere in the universe even if you don't find exactly a fluid flowing you will surely find a lot of heat transfer being uh, existing in uh, different parts of the universe and more specifically on our Earth, we have weather and climate changes which are very much a function of such fluid flow driven by heat transfer and pressures. Of course, by also assisted by the motion of the Earth, the rotation and the revolution around the Sun. So we have different temperatures which cause a lot of these uh, flow phenomena. We have, we have fluid flow and heat transfer applications for as high as the air for aircrafts, as low as the sea um, on the uh, surface ships and of course under the sea in submarines and also on the land in locomotives and automobile sector. So we have them in recreational activities as well, especially they are very much interested to reduce the drag so that they can increase the fuel efficiency and the performance of uh, cars or bike riders or those who are cruising through uh, the sea for water sports as well. Overall we are dealing with a very beautiful uh, phenomena called fluid mechanics. So that's the reason why we are dealing with fluid mechanics and uh, we are going to go through more specifically how fluid mechanics has been um, modeled and captured and done on a given computer apart from the analytical studies. But let's look at how people try to analyze fluid mechanics across the centuries. First of all, as I mentioned, a lot of things were done on paper. This was analytical fluid dynamics. Before the computers really started coming up, the computer that we know, the fast ones, the desktop computers or the laptops, people were doing a lot of calculations using hand calculations, using pen and paper and the usual process that they used to follow was well, they do a free body diagram, they make a free body diagram, they try to use some, um, some methodology, some smart engineering assumptions after having listed down the mathematical model. With, with those assumptions and approximations and in some cases real simplifications of a three-dimensional complicated geometry into a simple two-dimensional or one-dimensional analysis, they ended up doing an integration of these equations setting up the constraints in the form of initial and boundary conditions to find out the constants of integration and ultimately getting values, values at discrete points and that's where they could end up having a nice results, get plots, get the force variation across a plate. So this is a very simple uh, problem uh, of drag on a flat plate which you would find in regular fluid mechanics textbooks using um, I mean a, a finite volume uh, which is generated around the streamline where the velocity is the cons is constant from the inlet to the outlet and they could find out a correlation or uh, I would not say a correlation an exact integral equation for finding out the drag D on this plate. Well that's analytical fluid dynamics that's AFD 